Hello, Nadine. It's nice to have you again with us today. Um, and thanks for, thanks for being on the panel as well. That was really, really helpful. And we've also got Alexandria with us, who, who is back to, to help us to have this conversation. And you also will be asking some questions. But for those who don't know you, Nadine, you're a careers consultant in the HE space. Now, can you, can you just tell us how you became a careers consultant? Why a careers consultant? And, and, and what do you do as a careers consultant? Of course. Well, firstly, thank you so much for having me back, Father. It's a pleasure to be here and discuss things with you again. So, yes, I'm a qualified careers consultant. And once I finished my undergraduate degree, I knew that I wanted to make a difference to the lives of, you know, young people and those going through education. So I started off working at Milton Keynes College as a careers advisor and then realized quite quickly if I wanted to progress, I needed to really gain further qualifications in relation to career guidance. And so that's what I decided to do whilst working working part-time and then this sort of for me I realized that that was really the area that I wanted to focus on and specialize in because I found it very rewarding giving my time to really helping others and empowering them to really reach their full potential whether that be in relation to academia or in industry yeah. and and I'm, I, know, I know I'm asking you lots of questions off from but I just need to ask you this question so do you get to talk to a lot of people from the black community because obviously the topic we're dealing with is we're looking at the education experience in this sort of pandemic season that we're in and whether it's a fair playing field for this generation with a particular focus on on the black community do you do you get to to interact with a lot of people from the black communities and and how does that how is that working yeah, so throughout my career, I have definitely been able to do that. It has varied from working in FE to HE, and working in London, it does depend on the institution. So when I was working at the University of East London, very diverse, I'd say majority of the students were from Black, Asian and minority ethnic backgrounds. And where I'm working, another university, it's mainly students from China. So I have worked with a lot of Black students, yes. Well, I love it. I love it. Okay. So on the day, you, you were talking to us about self-confidence and self-belief and utilizing your network and resources. I, I just thought to give you more opportunity now, we don't have the time constraint, you know, to say anything you wanted to say into that space to the young people listening or to parents listening. You know, you may just want to say a little bit more from that. And you may also have reflections from all the conversations that were going on because there was a lot of chat going on as well on that day. So I just want to give you that opportunity to say something. Thank you. So yes, in terms of the actual day of the event, you know, I thought it was brilliant. It was really good to hear from young people and the barriers that they have really found in relation to education and thinking about their careers. And, you know, so hearing their testimonies, for me, it was quite familiar. I feel like I've heard these things before. It would be good to hear something more positive. And so I feel really that, you know, employers and universities have a lot of work to do. I think that can be done through a number of ways. So sometimes for, you know, various different reasons, um, you know, universities, Universities, um, you know, various institutions just for some reason have lower expectations from black students and other students from minority ethnic um, groups. And so I feel, you know, what's the reason behind that? Why are they sort of thinking along these lines and how can we really challenge that? So I think, you know, it's important to have conversations and obviously with everything that's been happening at the moment with Black Lives Matter, Yes, there are conversations happening, but also we need to think about really taking action so that we can see, you know, um, young black people in really good professional roles. So, for example, when we came back to the actual event, you know, some young people were mentioning how they were maybe at really good universities, but then being in the minority, people didn't really connect with them and the struggles they faced. We need to see more people of colour going to these top universities. And then also in terms of the career service, giving support to them and understanding their needs, any barriers they face and helping them really to achieve their potential beyond the university setting. So I'm going to ask Alexandria to come in because you're, you're a young one, aren't you? And, and you've just gone through, through university and you've done very well. You know, you, you've, you've come out with really top, I don't even am allowed to say, but you've done really, really well. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Now, what would you want to say to what Nadine just said? Because you're, you're sort of in that place now where you're going into the workplace, aren't you? And, and looking at opportunities. Do you have something you want to say to Nadine? 
Well, yeah, I would like to um, ask for your advice. Definitely, I'm university graduate, so I am the face of many people right now in the UK who have just tried to graduate through this pandemic and um, successfully or unsuccessfully everyone is still kind of scrambling about how to go forward um, into the workplace fresh out of uni um, so what what would you say for us to do is there anything maybe unique that we need to do on top of the standard uh, expectations you would have of a graduate to kind of mitigate this this pandemic and what's going on around employment and things like that yeah really good question thank you for that andrea and Andrea. so what i would say is um in terms of thinking you know about you know what you can do as students as graduates i think you know it depends on your situation everyone is unique and so what i would say is if you have finished university what you can do is really still see if you can engage with your career service contact them have meetings with them even if it's going to be remotely just to find out you know is it possible you know for you to have a meeting with me can we discuss my future i'm looking either to gain some work experience i'm looking to see how i can develop you know and boost my cv and getting some guidance from them now obviously with every career service it is you know different and um, as i mentioned during the event sometimes there isn't really a lot of diversity in the career services and that can in at times be a barrier i have to say for young people so it's about really having time to you know meet with them and see how they can actually help you and then how you can move forward in a very productive way so for example sometimes you know employers will give talks at universities will give now virtual tours to students to say come and join us but actually for many students you know many graduates of color they could end up going into a brilliant job and walking onto that office floor where they're going to be and not seeing anybody that looks like them and that can be you know a real challenge you know to deal with especially if you already had that at you know the university setting so what we need to really do is sort of work with universities, work with the career services, employer engagement to find out how they can, you know, do more to make, you know, young people of colour feel confident going into a range of different settings. So that can be through things like mentoring. It can be through encouraging you to do more co-curricular activities, whether it be setting up a society, doing some kind of employability award. All of those things can be really positive as well. OK, and I think also sometimes having things like focus groups where you can bring people together of color and discuss some of the challenges they're facing can help to give a real picture of what it is that they need to um, sort of deal with and how the university can then help them you know proactively actually do that thank you that was very helpful <laughs> and, and i think that plays because I'm, I'm looking as you're talking to me at, at all these destination data you know and then data whether that's post gcse whether that's post A levels or, or, you know, or even post, you know, the HE. And all of it seems to be indicating, you know, that there, there's quite a, a growth in people going into education, apprenticeships or employment, you know, so the data seems to be pointing in the right direction, irrespective of whether, you, which community you're from. But sometimes the experience we hear is very different from what the data is saying to us, you know, and I mean, I, I speak to a lot of young people who seem to struggle, you know, and, and so they, they'll take another option or they'll, they'll take another year out or they'll go another, go and do another uh, further studies, you know, is there, in, is there, I know there's not one linear path for everybody, you know, because everybody will, will find a way through, but how do we inspire our young ones? you know, to know that there is a way to get where you want to get to, even though it may not be the most <laughs> linear path that you had thought you were going to get to. So someone like Alexandria, I'm very aspirational. I know where she's trying to get to, but that journey may not, may, may do a bit of this, you know, it may, it may not be as linear as she'd love it to be. How do I keep Alexandria encouraged and motivated and, and on, on focus, you know, with what she's trying to do. Okay. So in terms of sort of keeping motivated, you know, I think it does help to actually hear success stories. 
You know, I think that can be really powerful and that can be through a range of different settings. And again, through mentoring and through teaming up with other organizations to hear, look, this is how we've helped people, you know, of color to become successful and we can actually help you too. And this is how we can do it. And there are many organizations like that. I mean, there are quite a lot in London, but also, you know, in other parts of the country. So it's looking to really hear positive stories about how people have, let's say, maybe over and then how they actually have gone on to be really successful. That does help. That, that is good. And I think one of the things you sort of mentioned about was the importance of networking as well for, for our young yes. ones. And, and I, I, I guess they struggle a little bit with, with that word networking um, because it's not always, I don't know, Alexandria, you can talk to this, but it's, it doesn't seem to come naturally sometimes. I mean, you're quite a social people person and I know you've been reaching out into different networks that you can get into. But how does a young person start that journey of networking? So networking, you know, it means different things to different people. And sometimes we can be very confident with our friends and families. But then when it comes to networking for an opportunity with an employer, it can then be quite scary, quite daunting. And I think over the years, supporting students, you know, different types of students have, you know, overcome obstacles to networking. What can be helpful is to attend, you know, like a networking workshop or to, you know, meet with a mentor or careers advisor or someone who's confident at networking and just discuss with them, what can I do? How can I prepare for this event? How can I prepare a pitch for this particular employer and get some tips as to how they can do that? So it's about having some confidence, you know, making sure that you're going to be a clear communicator and making sure that you do have a clear end goal as well when networking. So I'm going to ask you a question now, Nadine, um, that's playing in my mind. And obviously, because we're focusing on the Black community, yes. and you work with them, I'm trying to see if there's a differentiator, mm. you know, in terms of when they present to you between, you know, a, a Black student and a white student or any other student, and also a differentiator in the perception of the potential employer that they need to be aware of as they start to present themselves for mm. those opportunities. Because we've talked about, you know, stereotypes and perceptions and biases and, and, and you know, the names on the CV, it sounds English or it sounds like it's a foreign name, you know, all those all those subtle things, you know, that, that, that maybe even the people aren't aware of. So, so I'm just trying to understand and pick out for, for a black student or a, a BAME student, you know, who is presenting to you. First of all, do you see differentiators at, at the level of the conversations you're having, but also for the employer's point of view in terms of how they're likely to receive, you know, both candidates with equal equal grades, equal everything. And, and does that mean that we need to do something different? I know that sounds unfair, but we are talking about whether this is a fair playing field or not for our young people. Of course, of course. So when I have, you know, supported and I do support um, black students or BAME students, sometimes it's clear that there are some differences, you know, in comparison to white students. And, you know, sometimes there are not. For example, something that perhaps a black student from a middle class background, the way they present, it will be different from, you know, a black student from perhaps a lower class background. So I have to sort of bear that in mind as well. So some of the differences could be that, you know, they can't afford to, um, you know, do sort of unpaid work experience because they need to be working, you know, during their studies to actually provide, you know, for themselves, possibly also for their families. It could also be that they need to, you know, um, they have childcare commitments or caring responsibilities. And therefore it's not easy just to attend all the things that are happening, you know, Monday to maybe Saturday throughout the academic calendar. Yeah. So there's some of the things. Also, um, I've noticed confidence has been a big thing. And it could be, for example, if they are already in a university that is predominantly white, and then feeling in the minority, sort of thinking, okay, well, now I've got to do this all over again, but, you know, I'm going to get paid to go and work somewhere. And again, not really fit in. How can I deal with that? So that can be other things that do come up. And also time management. So whether it be applying for graduate schemes or turning up for appointments, I found often BAME students are late for that. So late with applying for graduate schemes rather than their white um, peers. And also when it comes to appointments, let's say with me and others, 
often turning up late or having to be reminded your appointment is now. And I'm not quite sure, you know, why that does happen, but sometimes it's just about taking time to then have a chat. Well, what's going on? Why didn't you apply? And you said that you're going to apply for this. Or why have you just found out about this now, you know, and having those conversations and being non-judgmental, giving them time and listening to understand what really is going on here so that I can help you to move forward in a positive way. Wow. Alexandra, do you hear that? Do you want to say anything about that? No, I think that was very comprehensive. I, I, I think that I think there's a lot of food for thought there, you okay. know, um, in terms of how we can prepare ourselves better, you mm -hmm. know, for these opportunities in, in leveling that playing field, because that is so, so important. And I guess one of the questions that, I, that comes up a lot as well is whether the institution you go to has an impact on the type of opportunities that are presented to you. So we know, for example, that certain employers only go to certain institutions to recruit, say for example, or, you know, how, and, and with the data saying to us that 44% of, you know, black students go to the low tier universities, not to say that they're not good institutions in their own right, but how do we balance this out? Mm. I think it is a real concern because I'm noticing that obviously for me working in a range of different universities I can see a difference and it's quite disheartening sometimes when a student they might have completed their undergraduate studies with no real additional work experience and then been sold that dream of well go and do postgraduate study and you'll get a great job mm -hmm. and they complete a master's and still no work experience during that time but they think they're going to land you know a a really great job with good money without having the experience and so it's the support that's needed you know along the way whether they're at one of the top 20 universities Russell Group or a lower university having that support with careers and employability can really make a difference it's important for students you know to really get involved in co-curricular activities to gain work experience to really put them up there when it comes to applying for opportunities and obviously with some of us we have contacts so maybe parents and family friends can help us to get that internship or whatever but for a lot of people that isn't the case and so it's sort of staying at the bottom and not being able to really move um, very high in terms of the career yeah we need to do something about it and i think that's why the support network and this is what we can do as a community is is and i know on the day we talked about some groups that people could sort of find out about you know which could help in terms of creating that support network and pushing where you don't naturally have it you know i think jason mentioned a few on the day but yeah I, do you want do you have a few that you also want to mention um, I mean, I did mention them already with the links and I could probably send you a list as well that you could share. I'll put that together for you. That would be very helpful. And I think my, my sort of coming towards my final question is around when, when should a young person start thinking about their career? Mm -hmm. um, primary school, secondary school, A-levels, obviously you have to do by the time you get into A-levels, but it, so that it starts to influence sort of their attitudes towards education. Because mm -hmm. I think maybe within our community, and you may say this may not just be a black community thing, maybe we start thinking about it sometimes a bit too late, you know, and then we're sort of trying to play catch up, you know. Um, when, from your experience and from a career point of view, would you be advising, you know, um, parents and young people to really start thinking about opportunities and what that means in terms of your performance or in terms of your you know, your achievements and all that kind mm -hmm. of things that people sort of know, you know, and are informed about some of these things before it's too late. So I would say, you know, the earlier the better, really. So ideally from primary school age, having some idea of different careers, and that can be through a range of different exercises. It can be with, let's say, maybe some kind of school, you know, careers advisor coming in, or organizing some kind of talk with different employees to get an insight into different things that people can do. And ideally if students and young people can see people that look like them in various different roles, it can make them think, well, I could be like that when I grow up. It needs to be more than just people of one race standing in front of them saying, well, look, I did this because they need to hear about challenges. They need to hear about barriers and how they can actually overcome them. So if it relates to them, you know, they can identify with that and think I need to have the right kind of attitude going forward and I need to be ambitious. Yeah. So you have a good story, Nadine. I wasn't going to ask you to tell your story, but I'm going to ask you now to tell me your story. And, okay. and I don't mind because I think it will encourage 
um, a lot of our young people, you know, to know that, yes, you can have challenges along the way, you know, yes. you can yeah. still get through and, mm -hmm. and get to where you're trying to get to. So do you mind, you have, feel free to, to cut out what you want to cut out, but just, <laughs> just, to, <laughs> just to encourage our, our young ones who are looking at you and thinking, wow, you know, you know, I'd love to be in a dean, or I'd love to have that confidence that you have or that belief that you, that you have that has sort of navigated you to where you are today. So of course, I'd be happy to share. So for me, um, I was born in London and then um, lived in the Caribbean for a short while. And my family and I, we came then to live in Milton Keynes. So for us, you know, um, like for me being the oldest of three siblings, all girls, um, I went to St. Paul's Catholic School in Milton Keynes. And, you know, I had a pretty good experience there. It's not as diverse as it, you know, um, is now back then. But, um, you know, it was a good experience. And I remember getting to sixth form and we were starting to think about you know and um, predicted grades and going to university and whatnot and I remember one of the teachers saying to me for health and social care we're going to predict you to get you know um, a grade c and a grade d is that okay and I thought well no it's not okay actually I'd like to get an a and a b you know for this particular course although I might look bored in the classroom sometimes I've actually I've got bigger plans for myself and I knew that grades did matter. So I actually, you know, just studied hard and I got my A and B and I went on to Coventry University. Um, at that university, it was quite diverse and I really liked that. So I met students from different countries, you know, all over the world, different universities, and that was great. And um, my lecturer, was in charge of my program he was actually black I think that was the first black teacher that I actually had and the only one in fact so that was really positive and I still keep in touch with him and um, so for me sort of going through that journey I knew that employability was really important I wasn't 100% sure what I wanted to do but I knew that I was interested in some kind of caring profession giving back helping people and I do hear that a lot when I'm doing my one-to-ones so for me, I had to do a placement every year, so I made sure that I did different placements. I worked as a learning mentor in a sort of school in sixth form, and then for my final placement, I went to Ghana, Accra in Ghana, I organized a placement there to work for the Department of Social Welfare. And, you know, I really enjoyed that, again, meeting people from different backgrounds and feeling like I was making a difference. And so after that, having that great experience, I finished university and then I applied for um, 15 jobs and I got 12 interview offers and then I actually got several job offers after that and I just felt quite confident in myself and made the right choice for me and so that led me to working at Milton Keynes College and um, you know when I was working at Milton Keynes College I knew that I really wanted to be a qualified careers advisor or careers consultant so when I left that role I was working in London part-time and self-funded myself to do postgraduate qualifications in career guidance again at Coventry University and you know it was a great experience and I wanted to finish the course in two years part-time but unfortunately due to my health I have endometriosis I nearly died when I was 25 years old and I had to have major surgery and that was a setback but I had you know lecturers who were understanding so I was able to continue at my own pace and still complete that a year later so I feel very grateful for that but for me it was also you know having my faith and I was a member of Milton Keynes Christian Centre, still watch the, um, you know, um, TV, so online, I still listen to everything, which I think is great. And I recently did the Alpha course, but it was really just, you know, having my faith, having my family, you know, and belief that I could do more that really got me through that time. So that was a difficulty I faced. And then when it came to applying for jobs in, you know, careers and career guidance and being a careers consultant, I felt quite confident through that process and was able to have quite a few job offers during my time and just then going in to make a difference to people's lives and there has been various setbacks along the way but the thing is for me you know I'll always have my faith always you know believe in God and trust in him and also you know I just know that if you have that self-belief in yourself and that confidence and you have support around you whether it's a supportive network of family friends employers mentors etc that can really help to carry you through so having positive people in my life can really make a difference as well and so yeah and now I'm um, married I'm living in London and I'm working at three universities which I really enjoy that is, honestly that is that is brilliant thank you so much for sharing that I'm sure that will help a lot of people you know mm -hmm. because you've just pushed through you know and and your your determination and your passion for what you do really really shines through and your faith is a big part of that so 
So that is really good to put out there as well, because I'm a person of faith as well, you know, and your faith really does matter. You know, it, 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 it gives you the confidence, it gives you the belief, you know, it, it's, it's just another, it's not another thing, it's the thing, you know, um, that sort of helps everything come together. So thanks for sharing your story. Thank thanks you. for being open and honest. You're and welcome. Alexandria, I'm sure that that has helped you. Do you have a final question? Oh, I just wanted to say thank you for stressing that work experience um, when it comes to qualifications, because I think that's a big thing. People think, OK, I'm going to go and do postgrad and um, don't realize work experience can be a great equalizer. It's, it's definitely an encouraging thing um, for people I know, people around me coming out of um, undergrads, even masters, to know that we can still kind of make something of ourselves even going to low tiers or middle tier universities so i think that was really really good piece of advice thank you you're very welcome and i would encourage you know any sort of students or graduates who've been studying things like psychology you know human resource management and other courses similar to those you know consider actually being a careers advisor a careers consultant that can be either in schools in you know secondary or primary schools in further education or universities or even you know with charities you know there's a lot of work needed especially during these times so i'd encourage you to consider things like that as well thank you and i know with the results coming now you, you just got me onto the results in in august and everybody will be getting their results and yes you yeah. know what to do you know and that's when they need the careers advice the most absolutely you know, and the support the most you know I mean, I know when my kids were, were going through school, I think they had some careers advice, but I don't think it was, it was really well-grounded and, and, mm. and I was in their schools, you know, but, but I think that's where people like you, Alexander, or other people coming into that profession and, and sort of really with, with a heart, you know, a real heart to make a difference like you, Nadine, is always will be a good thing for the generations to come. So I'm not, I'm not changing your focus, Alexandria. I'm just thinking <laughs> to everybody as well, you know, out there who might be thinking, what do I want to do? So thank you so much, Nadine. This has been really, really good. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you yeah. for your time. You know, I'm sure we may be pointing a few people to you that may need help if you don't mind, you know. That's fine. I think you're, you're a very inspirational person, you know, and, 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 and that comes through very, very well. So, so thanks for doing that. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Lovely to see you both again. Okay, Nadine. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.